Antje Boyd and Broderick Boyd and we're the creators of the Magnetize Demand Summit. So we're really excited for you to jump right into the next interview because we have created this for you to stop attracting emotionally unavailable men, overcome your trust issue and so much more so you attract that right man for you that makes you feel seen, cherished and supported. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to see you inside the interview and get you on the path to magnetizing your man once and for all. See you there. Look forward to it. Mm -hmm. Hey, it's Anki Boyd with the Magnetize the Man Summit where single successful women crack the attraction code and live their happily ever after. Look, sometimes you have to go on a lot of dates to learn a lot of great wisdom. This is why I have this very special guest here, an expert with me today, Wendy Newman, who literally went on 121 dates. That's right, girlfriend, you heard me. So welcome, Wendy. Thank you so much for having me, Auntie. It's good to be here. Yes, 121 first dates. Can you even imagine it? Blah. More than the Dalmatians have dots on their fur, right? <laughs> like the 101 Dalmatians. Awesome. So let me tell you a little bit about Wendy. And let me tell you, she's a hood. She's going to have some great stories. So you do not want to miss anything. Grab a cup of coffee and, or tea and enjoy and sit back. So Wendy Newman is a media celebrated author and a dating sex and relationship expert who's led hundreds of workshops and has helped over 50,000 women internationally. She helps women to understand men, dating, sex, and partnerships of all kinds. Hey, you know, we're not discriminating. She's, since 2002, she's interviewed thousands of men on relationships, love, dating, sex, and the opposite sex. She's conducted polls, had one-on-one -on -one discussions, and hosted over 100 male speaker panels. I know, ladies, you wanted to be there. I know for those <laughs> topics, right? So I know, you're always telling me, like, why is nobody else telling me that? Wendy is a compassionate fellow dater who navigated her way through 121 first dates before, oh, the 120 first dates because she met her partner on the 121st date, and they live in San Francisco and live there happily ever after. In her book, of course, 121 First Dates, How to Succeed on Online Dating, Fall in Love, and Live, live Happily Ever After. That was a reason why she's here. Is part juicy tell-all, part anti-rules dating guide. It's been optioned for a Hollywood film and is getting love from the Wall Street Journal, Chicago Tribune, Washington Post, Glamour, Self, Huffington, Post, Access Hollywood, and more. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome, Wendy. Oh my God, what a mouthful, right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so how exciting to have you here. So yeah, of course, I want to hear from you. Why did you write this book? Oh, okay. So I did not at all. First off, I never meant to go on 120 first, 221 first dates. No woman in their right mind would ever want to do such a thing. I thought I would go on like two or three and then I would meet my guy. And since I was already in the love and relationship and understanding men business that I had that competitive edge, it was just going to be like happening for me in seconds. No, it, it took a decade and, and 121 first dates, but I never meant to write, to write the book. What happened was during the time I was in the middle of my dating process, I was having bad date after bad date. You've had them, you've been there, if you've dated for any length of time, just, I was on a roll. And at the time I had a lot of married girlfriends telling me how fun it was to be single and how exciting it must be to be single. And I'm having all these catastrophe dates, right? <laughs> and can I tell you a story of the date that actually had me write the book? Please, we want to hear all about it. <laughs> so I had this date and it happened to be date number 54. Now, I wasn't counting, but my Google <laughs> Calendar. <Are you> sure? <laughs> Google Calendar knew it was number 54. And it, it was just so bad. And I had just, the, the straw broke, you know, the girlfriend saying, oh, my, my boring husband. And I thought, sister, <laughs> let me share with you what's going on here. And I 
wrote a little blog about what happened on the stake. So what happened was he looked good on Match.com. This was many years ago. He looked great on Match.com. He was a pilot. He was into aviation. He lived on this beautiful houseboat in Sausalito, which is this bougie little bedroom community right outside of San Francisco on the other side of the Golden Gate Bridge. On paper, he looked great. 48 years old at the time I was, I was, uh, let's say, uh, 42, I was 42. And he was 48, perfect, right? So I can't wait, we're just gonna have drinks, no dinner, no, nothing crazy. We're gonna meet in Marin County, have some drinks, have a nice little date, little meet and greet. So I arrive, and in the parking lot where he arrives at the parking lot in the same time at the same time but i don't realize it's him because who i see is this 78 year old man hobbling across the street really slowly because there's something going on he can't he's all stiff he can't walk there's something super funky about him and he looks at me and he smiles and he says wendy <laughs> Oh my God. First date mistake right here, right here. I looked at him and I, I mean, he was so elderly. I almost wanted to take his arm and help him into the restaurant. But my first date mistake was I went in. I had that panic that we have that you can't be displeasing, be a nice person. Don't let him know you're judging him. Panic, right? Mm -hmm. So I said, yes. And I went in with him. And he was wearing this light tan corduroy uh, vest from, or not vest, but jacket from like the 70s. And it had this huge wine, red wine stain that had been there for God only knows how long. And it, the t-shirt he was wearing had lettering on it, but I didn't read it because I was so much like grease and badness. And at that point, I didn't dare look at his pants like, ooh. Oh, <laughs> oh no. I know. We go in. Yeah sit down, get them, and he's like, can I have a menu? And I'm like, oh, no, 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 drinks. We said drinks. He said, oh, no, I'm hungry. You should eat. Date mistake number two. <laughs> so I sat through a horrible meal where I had to do all of the heavy lifting. He didn't do any of the talking. You know how when you go on dates and they don't like you, and so you end up having to talk for both of you? It was like that, only he liked me, which was like twice as bad because... Not only did I have to deal with him liking me, but I had to deal with all the heavy lifting of the conversation. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Towards the very end, he said, can I tell you what happened to me? I, I got in an accident, can I tell you what happened? And I said, sure, because I had been doing all of the heavy lifting. Finally, he's gonna give me something so we can get on with the state, we can pay the bill, I can get the hell out of here. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, he, said, so he says, last Friday I was in a motorcycle accident. And I'm thinking, you're on a motorcycle at your age? I got in a motorcycle accident, he said. And then he said, um, and, and I swear to God, these are his words, not mine. Okay? He said, and I injured my Johnson. And it has swollen up with blood. And the hospital is waiting to see if it will go down. They're talking about doing surgery on it, but we don't want to do that because that could impede my ability to have sex. So we're going to wait a little while to see if it goes down naturally, but I have an erection right now. And I just wanted you to know that because if you wanted to come back to my place, it won't go down. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh my God. Like you sometimes wonder, is it, if it's a made up story, it's a really great made up story, right? It's uh, just, just overdosed on Viagra or something. I don't know. Even he lied about his age. He lied, lied about his, I'm sure. I think he was homeless. And then I ended up picking up most of the bill, of course, because when I when it, the bill came, I said, may I help? And he said, yes. And he told me the total, which was more than mine. So we learned many, many lessons. But the worst <sighs> offense for me, the very worst offense on this date was at the very start when he said, Wendy, I blew it because I froze and I didn't want to be judgy. Mm -hmm. And what I should have said in that moment, if I, we could take it back, what I should have said was, oh, hey, Jeff, that's you? Because I think you stretched a little bit on your profile. You are not 48. 
And I'm not going to stay on this date. So I hope you have a really great Saturday. I'm going to give you your day back. Right. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what thanks for sharing you? that, Wendy, because that's like, <laughs> you know, you can only connect the dots looking backward, right? Yeah. And, and when he said, and I said drinks and he said food, no eat. Another moment to say, no, actually, I, we said drinks and I'm just going to have drinks. In fact, I think I've got 10 more minutes. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So and, many on that day. And then what was the third one? There were three mistakes. That, that I walked in, that I stayed, that well, I stayed through the meal, which I didn't need to do that. And yeah. then the other mistake is I played along. Like I did all that heavy lifting. So yes. whether you're, I don't care if it's because he likes you or he doesn't like you, or I don't care what the reason is. But if you notice you're having to be the entertainer and you're exhausted, when you usually notice it is you're like, I need some iced tea. I'm exhausted. Like you, right. can, in the moment you kind of realize what's happening and it's because yeah. you've been having to do all the work. Right. At that point, the mistake was that I, I kept it up. I kept up the charade. I should have just, and I recommend you at any point where you're do, doing the heavy lifting, just stop, just literally grab your iced tea, stop talking, sit back and see if they pick it up. And if they don't pick it up, you just ended the date. Yay. Yeah. You're just like, well, oh, seems like we're at the end of it. So thank you very much. You know, <laughs> exactly. very cool. What else did you learn? Wendy, what's with the other dates? Oh, so many things. I think the biggest thing, though, is that whole leaving business. And it seems like such a crazy thing to, you know, some women who get it are like, oh, yeah, I do that all the time. But mm -hmm. for the majority of women, it just seems so crazy and mean and not right and not honoring mm -hmm. of the other person's time and like that. But really, there were so many times where I stayed that I wished I wouldn't. And there has never been a time that I left that I regretted it. And in fact, there was date number two. It was date number two of the 121. He had, we, we said dinner, uh -huh. we were waiting in the lounge for the table for the hostess to get us to the, to the server, what do we call it, maitre d', get us over to the table. And within 10 minutes, he had down two doubles and was telling me how I needed to give up my travel agency because what he needed was a girlfriend and also a live-in, like, help person. What? Yeah. <laughs> but, and, oh and, and so literally, and he had two doubles just downed him, and I was like, oh, boy, here we go. And right then, the maitre d' came, and she said, I'm ready to seat you now. She had the phone under her arm and the menus, and I, very, I, I thought this was my moment, right? And I grabbed her on the shoulder, and she looked really annoyed because she was really busy, and I just said, hey, thank you for seating us, but I'm actually not, we're not staying for dinner. And I turned to him right as we were being seated and said, we're not quite a fit and I'm going to give you your evening back. I got to go. And I, whoop, I bolted out of there and it felt so scary, you know, in that yes. moment, but man, five miles down the road. Whew. Yes. Oh when my gosh. When someone's showing bad judgment, when someone has lied to you, when they've lied about their status, you don't owe that stranger your time. You don't owe them your Saturday night. You can get the hell out of there. And you just gotta be as graceful as you can, you know? And, and Wendy, what tip do you have for those women who are like, how do I deal with the aftermath of the internal dialogue and that internal tension that they feel after they left? Yeah, I mean, you just want to give yourself a big fat break. And we have to, as women, we are dealing with our inner critic. And I know that all people have an inner critic, but women's are definitely different than men because we have that, that nagging voice of perfection. And mm -hmm. she will always tell you, you did it wrong, or you could have been more graceful, or you should have waited it out, or there could have been a different way, or, you know, she's always got feedback for us, right? And so how you deal with the moment and the fallout and the feelings and the inner critic is you just remember that your job is to show up on a date on time and show up on a date as yourself, be yourself and get to know this interesting new person. And if you have the grace for it to put in boundaries wherever you can to stop any crap from happening, including leaving right away. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, no matter what else happens, you won. You won the game. You won the dating game. Show up as yourself. Show up on time. 
try and get to know a new person, that's it. Whether it turns out or not, it kind of doesn't matter because they're not all supposed to turn out. Yeah, and you know, and I love that we talked about the dinner piece because I just talked with somebody else yesterday at my mastermind and we talked about like, you know, she just does drinks or like a walk where she can walk away. <laughs> you know what I mean? When you're on a walk, you're like, all right, this is my house, this is my turn, so I gotta go. And, or just have like a quick drink, like 20 minutes, you know, just like jamba juice or whatever, right? Um, yeah. But so I think that's a good, good piece of advice. It's like not even go to a restaurant. God forbid, <laughs> don't meet at a restaurant, right? Yeah, you know, I'm such a weirdo. I still do. I, you know, if I were single today and dating, I would probably still do the restaurant. But I, I, had, a, I had a guideline for myself, which uh-huh. I never said yes to restaurants based on if he was cute or not. I said yes to restaurants based on if he was interesting enough or not. Mm-hmm. And I can talk to anybody for hours about anything. So I, because I'm so extroverted, it's not that big of a deal to be at, at a table with someone for an hour and a half if we're entertaining, even if we're not a fit, right? Yeah. So that's, that's okay with me. But I absolutely had to know that they were interesting enough that I had a good four or five questions to probe about what they're up to in life and what, you know, their experiences. And that only backfired once. He seemed amazing on paper and we got in front of each other and I wasn't his type and I knew it. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. And so he didn't really give me all that much and we were at dinner, which was kind of a drag. And then he asked me to go out to drinks after that, which I thought, you don't even like me. Why are we going out? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> why would we move locations when you're not talking to me in this one? So right. people do what they do, but. So, they, so they. Wendy, like, you know, you've been on 121 days. I wish I would know my number of dates over the 10 years before I met Brody. You know, I'm like, man, I didn't use a calendar, you know, but anyways, um, what could you tell women who are like, gosh, Wendy, that it sounds like a lot of dates. And yes, you found your man, which we don't want to hear that. We want to hear that in a moment. But before you talk about that, I'm curious to hear how you were managing yourself, your internal belief systems, your internal dialogues, when you were going on all those dates. How did you not get discouraged? How did you keep your hopes up? Well, I did get discouraged. And it's impossible to think that we wouldn't. And there are a lot of people who say, well, you will never meet your person unless you're vibrating at that perfect high, you know, vibration and you'll call in the right vibration for you and Mm -hmm. and it's great to live like that and to try and be in your highest place and to be grounded and to meditate and do all the things we do to clean ourselves off and clear ourselves out and be ready but it's just impossible I mean when I met Dave Mr. 121 I was I was I'd had it in fact I'd taken (laughs) myself offline we went on a second date he said he said, I noticed you're not online anymore. I said, yeah, well, you know, I'm working on my book and there's a few things I got going on and maybe I'll go on next year. It was February. I had had it. <laughs> so even when you are potentially burned out, you need to look, am I just frustrated and I've had it? And can I, am I in good enough working order mm-hmm. that I can be out there or, or how you know you need a break is when Every man is the same and they're all jerks. <laughs> that maybe, maybe it's not him. Maybe it's you. So, so that's how I kind of, you know, there were, there were times when I had to look at, can I work through this and am I in good enough working order to keep going? Mm-hmm. Or do I need to call quits for two weeks and dust myself off? Mm-hmm. And how I really kept myself going in 10 years of dating and 121 first dates is I had dating buddies. I had three of them. And a dating buddy needs to be someone that wants what you want. Like, Mm -hmm. if you want to be married, an already married lady is not a good dating buddy, unless she's your coach. A coach can be a a good one because she's in that world of singledom. She knows your struggle. Married ladies, they forget, right? They forget the struggle. Um, So someone who wants what you want is a great dating buddy. If you want partnership or marriage and your girlfriend is just out for fun, not a good dating buddy. So I had three of them. None of them lived in my town. Not two of them lived out of state. We used the phone and we just supported each other and loved on each other. And we, we could hold the vision. I had dating buddies could hold the vision that my love was coming at a time when I could no longer hold the vision. Mm. So 
the best part about a dating buddy, besides they can love you up and tell you you need a break or tell you to keep going and hear you out and hear the stories, right, is they can, they can hold the vision when you can't. Ah, oh, that's so important, right? Because sometimes we forget, or right? we can't see ourselves. My husband always says, like, the fish doesn't know that it's wet. So, but the dating buddies know, you know, like, so that's, yes. that's very helpful, right? They see yes, us. very helpful. And so tell us a little bit about your, that date. I mean, you had it, it was February, which is like Valentine's month, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> so like, you're even more triggered. And now you're meeting date number 121. And what was different? Like, what, what happened? It was magical. The stars aligned. Uh, it, we were moving in slow motion. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you thought she's like joking or? <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, it was a really, really great first date. And in fact, we both had things to do. It was a Saturday night. We both had plans that night already. And I was going out, I was going to Mexico for about three weeks and I, we wanted to slip it in before I went out of town, right? Mm -hmm. So we crammed in a very quick 20 minute, which turned into 40 minute because we couldn't not keep talking to each other. Meet and greet drink, you know, that's all that was. And I, I'd love to tell you that I knew and that he was one and it was magical. And the truth is, is it was a really, really great date. And I liked him, I liked him a lot, he was easy. He was funny. I felt like I was myself with him. Uh, when I saw him, I thought, oh, damn, he's so hot. I'm not going to be able to be myself with this one. Yeah. But he, just who he was just brought out my natural self, the self I am with my best friend. So that was all great. But I want to caution, like, it wasn't a fairy tale because I had had that date before, probably like 30 other times, right? Mm -hmm. So I'd had good dates before this one. And the how it turned out to be so amazing and magical is we were a good fit. And he was one of the first ones that I dated that I didn't want to change. And I didn't want to stop dating. That's why it worked out. Wow. You didn't want to change <laughs> him. And you didn't want to stop dating him. Didn't, didn't want to date him. Didn't want to kick him out. Didn't, wow. or didn't want to didn't want to change him didn't want to kick him out yeah yeah that that's huge right because like sometimes you really know i, I noticed that too when i was saying my husband like by, back then he wasn't my husband but i realized he was like the only one i couldn't imagine not having in my life so i think there's something to be said about that right where we're like unconsciously and of course after so many dates um you know you have like you know your expectations your walls up or whatever you want to call it right so like it's, it almost would have surprised me if you would have been like, oh my God, the stars aligned and it was amazing. But, um, and then when, when did you know, Wendy, what would you say? Like, how long were you guys dating? Cause I get this question all the time. When should I know? When do you yeah. know how many dates? Well, so it's been five and a half years and we're married and I think I kind of know now. No I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so here's the, 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 the real skinny on this is as we started dating, I could see that he really did have everything on my very long list. You know, the lists are bad news, ladies. We all have them. And mine was four pages long of must haves, which was why it took me so damn long to get to him. Yeah. And there were things on my list that most men, you, it was either one or the other. You know, I had conflicting things on my list mm -hmm. that should have canceled, you know, one cancels the other out. Like yeah. I wanted a man who made me feel really safe, both emotionally and physically. And I'm a big woman anyway. I've got a big presence and I'm a, I'm a large woman. So to be bigger than me physically and stronger than me and bigger in personality and bigger in strength and bigger emotionally and all of it, right? Like he had to be bigger than me in so many ways and stronger than me in so many ways. But I also wanted someone who could make me feel really free. Mm. That's, mm. that's a different guy. That's not the same guy. You usually have someone who makes you feel free and equal and go do what you want. Go off to Africa for three weeks if you want to do that. Or someone who's going to keep you safe. Right. So you do both. Right? So I, I needed both. And I knew that I had conflicting things on my list of my four page list. And I just wasn't willing to settle. And so I, I had to wait it out. I just had to wait it out. And as I got to know him, I could see that he did have everything that I needed on my list. And there wasn't anything that I needed to change about him, mm. which is amazing. 
And then I think the final clincher for me was there was something that wasn't on my list that was actually more important than everything else, which was I needed somebody who could empower me to be the biggest badass me that I could be and that who was completely right right <laughs> yeah <laughs> completely fine with every aspect of my personality including that i'm kind of slutty and <laughs> i teach sex courses i don't mind talking about that and going there right. and i'm i'm very sex positive and so because of that that that's a real turn off to a lot of men right yeah, yeah. so it was another thing like i'm not going to tone it down for you i'm not going to i'm not going to once we're married I'm not going to become a housewife and tone it down for you. So having someone that could take the whole, who had big enough hands to deal with a handful that I am. <laughs> so I looking for someone with big hands. I, I so love that, Wendy. I could, I could listen to you forever, but I, I love that the women had plenty of opportunities to really make some distinctions for themselves. And to really believe in like that it's possible to really look at like, you know, you have your things on your list, but also you get what's really behind it. You know, I call it like the benefits versus the features, right? So you got everything, how you wanted to feel, what you thought, how you would feel with the benefits of the four page list at three pages. So, you know, we all have like, you know, <laughs> a lot of, page. nobody has just one page, you know? No. Um, so for the women who are like, gosh, you know, I just really want to learn more about from you and about you and, you know, I don't want to go on 121 dates if I can avoid it, you know. So what, what do you have for them, Wendy, how they can continue working with you? Yeah, exploring? absolutely. So they can find me at wendyspeaks.com. I don't do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I, because I leave that to you, um, but, I, but I do have products. But one of, the, one of the products I want to give away, actually, is called a 30-Day Love Breakthrough. And mm -hmm. we're we are so busy. Like we have our full life of work, which is already enough, too much usually. We've got our yoga practice. We've got our meditation practice. We got all these other things we're doing. We have a journaling thing we're doing now. Oh, I have to add another 30 day. Yes, because I know. <laughs> and so, because I know you're so busy and you won't do it if it's hard. I gave you the smallest snack bite possible. Every single day you'll get an email from me when you register and it's going to give you this tiny little snack bite of something to do, something to think about or meditate on or a question to answer. And not one single one of them will take longer than five minutes. Five minutes is the max. You might be journaling, but it's just a couple of sentences, no more than five minutes. So you can do that 30 day challenge, just five minutes a day. And it's fun and it's funny. And most importantly, at the end of the 30 days, you're going to have a better sense of who you are, what you need, what you're looking for, and you're going to actually uncover some things that you didn't even think about. So you're mm. welcome. <laughs> I, I love that, Wendy. And, and besides, you know, like you should have some extra space in your life because if you want to attract your man, I don't care if you're already doing your yoga practice and whatever, whatever. You, you have to put in some practice that shows the universe that you make space for it, right? Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, Wendy, thank you so much for being here on the series. Like, it was such a pleasure to have you. I always enjoy your stories, the spunkiness. And, uh, and for the ladies, I'll talk to you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Mmm, was that absolutely delicious? We just love how every single expert has those juicy pieces of wisdom for you to enjoy. Look, if you want to own the entire Magnetize the Man series, we invite you to get our Magnetize the Man VIP All Access Package. Not only will you own the entire video series, but also you will get our Magnetize the Man Masterclass that teaches you the three-step formula, step-by-step -step on how to attract the right man for you. You also get some other juicy secret trainings and a one-on-one -on -one call with me where we personalize your individual journey to attract that right man for you as soon as possible. So look, to get that, click the link below that says get access now and you get it all. Own the entire series, including all the juicy bonuses, well worth over $1,400 for nearly the fraction of the cost. All right. 
we will see you in the next interview. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Mwah. Mwah.